Spring has sprung here in North Carolina. Well, not technically, but today is March 1st and it is beautiful outside today. And I thought rather than filming down in my basement craft room, which is where I normally film videos, I decided to come upstairs into the sunshine and just enjoy this beautiful day. Speaking of today, we're gonna be talking all about spring projects. And I've been trying to embrace each season and enjoy all that it has to offer. And that goes for my crocheting and knitting as well. So today we're gonna talk about some spring projects that I've been working on. You might see one right behind me right here, but we're also going to talk about some ways that I'm learning how to enjoy each season. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first project that we're going to talk about is this cute little bunny rabbit right here. And this is a pattern from Lovely Knit Creation. I have been enjoying her work for quite some time now. She has some of the most beautiful knitted toy patterns out there and I finally got to knit one of them and I had a hard time choosing which pattern I was going to do but as I was thinking about this season and really enjoying and embracing spring I decided that I had to do a bunny rabbit and I just love this one so much look at that little tummy right there it's so adorable and I really enjoyed knitting this one make sure to check out her beautiful Instagram account and also her Etsy shop she has some really beautiful patterns there one of the other things that I'm trying to do this year besides Besides just enjoy each one of the seasons but also is to use what I already have in my stash so and I really wanted to use something that had a little bit of fuzz to it a little bit of texture and I knew exactly what I was going to use once I started looking through everything and I grabbed my Rowan Kid Silk Classic and the Rowan Kid Silk Haze so you actually hold the two together and the Rowan Kid Silk Haze is a very fine mohair and that's what gives it this little fuzzy texture and it's just so gorgeous. Now these are not budget friendly yarns but I had them in my stash and I knew that they would be really beautiful with this little girl and she's so soft too. It's just really cute and I really love the little addition of the cute little bow and I used my Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino because I had it in my stash as well. But I do want to tell you exactly what I did for her eyes. I used a tutorial on Instagram for how to make anchored French knots for for the eyes, specifically for knitted toys. It's a fantastic tutorial and I will link to it down below so that you'll be able to find it. And that creates the little dips in her face right here so that there's a little bit of definition for her eyes. But then they were really small and I decided what I would do after that was just add a couple of safety eyes. Because the way the pattern does the eyes is not the way that I can do them because she had different types of safety eyes. I did the anchored French knots to create the dip for the eyes and then I put the little safety eyes right on top of it so I really like how that turned out I think it looks really cute and these are five millimeter safety eyes and if you need some help choosing safety eyes make sure to check out my video all about Amigurumi safety eyes because I have found a really great company that has wonderful safety eyes and I think it is I'm gonna have to remember I think it's Safety Eyes 6060, but I could be wrong. I'll put a little card so that you'll be able to find them, but they're fantastic. And I can also link to the Safety Eye shop down below too, so that you can find them. But I love that she's really simple and I love that she's just so cute. She's perfect for spring. I could see her in a little Easter basket for some little girl. How cute would that be? She also comes with a dress, but I decided I just wanted a little naked bunny. I didn't even want to put the clothes on her. I also could see using this as home decor for your spring decorating. And if you're knitting or crocheting any little spring animals this season, like bunnies or little ducklings or anything else, make sure to check out my spring themed Amigurumi adoption kit. It's a digital resource that you can download right to your computer and print on your very own printer. And it comes with an adoption certificate. It comes with matching gift tags and it also comes with a keepsake letter template. So that way when you give your little toy to a child, it can be a very special gift giving experience and it will be not just giving them a toy but they're adopting a new friend and with the keepsake letter you can share a little bit more about your love for that child or why you made this for them and some of your experiences knitting and crocheting or you could even write a story about how this little toy came to life so I really hope that you will enjoy that I'll leave a link for it in the description box below as well one of the ways that I'm trying to embrace 
embrace each season is by adding little decorations around my home. Nothing extravagant. I'm not going to change out my pillows on my couch or do anything big, but just add those little touches to help me to remember to enjoy each spring. And I have my little Beatrix Potter collection that I've had since my kids were little, and I'm going to just put them out. I usually just keep them in a cabinet and they never see the light of day, but I'm going to bring them out and just try to make my home feel a little bit more spring-like and take my little winter decorations and put them away for the rest of the year. And I hope you enjoy kind of seeing what I'm doing. My goal is to just try to help me to think about the beauty of each season. And it's not hard when it's spring here in North Carolina, but even if you live in an area that doesn't have as dramatic of season changes as we do here in North Carolina, maybe you could add little decorative touches in your own home or maybe even wear things that are seasonal like this beautiful shawl that I made. This is a design by Isabel Kramer and it's a girl's best friend and I knit this. I'm trying to think if it was last year or the year before. You know what? I hardly ever wear it. This might be like the second or third time I've actually ever worn it but it's absolutely beautiful. It's stunning and that's something that I tend to do is if I make something I won't use it because it's too special and I'm gonna try not to do that anymore. So I hope you enjoy seeing the little decorative touches that I'm doing around my home this year. The next little project that I'm working on right now really doesn't seem like a spring project and it kind of isn't but I'm doing it anyway and I'm enjoying it so very much. And this is a little mug rug that I have made and it's actually a gauge swatch for a sock knitting class that I'm taking online. I took one of Patricia's classes before. She is from Knitography Farm and she teaches traditional Norwegian knitting and I am here for it. I love it so very much. Now I took her original stranded knitting course and if you've done color work before, you may still want to take this class because she really teaches the traditional Norwegian way of doing color work. Actually, she says it's not color work. She calls it stranded knitting because color work might mean fair isle and that's not what we're doing here. She's very specific, but she is an American lady who moved to Norway and has a sheep farm and she actually has her own wool. This is the wool from her actual sheep, but these are the Selbu socks that I am working on and boy, am I enjoying it so very much. Sometimes I get in a rut and I do certain things over and over and over again like crochet toys and I sometimes need to just stop and do something completely different and sock knitting is something that I've been really interested in and I knit a pair of socks last October but I haven't picked it up since and I've really wanted to knit these gorgeous socks. They are a traditional Norwegian design and I am just enjoying it so very much. So this is my second class that I've done with her. They're are very reasonably priced and she is such an incredible teacher so I'm just enjoying knitting socks and learning something new and I cannot wait to be able to put those socks on because they probably won't be done until late spring maybe even early summer I'm hoping I get them done sooner than that but we need socks all year round so even though they're not specifically spring I'm still really really enjoying that this spring and just doing something new because isn't that what spring is about it's a renewal. It's a time of growth and everything becoming beautiful. I love it and I feel like me learning how to make socks and particularly these stranded knitting socks in these gorgeous orange and white colors. I just, I love it so much. So make sure to check out Natography Farm if you're ever interested in learning traditional Norwegian knitting and I'll leave a link for her in the description box below. And I also have another video all about when I took her class of stranded knitting and I made a gorgeous cowl. So beautiful. Let me see. 
So one thing that I'm really trying to do is change up the types of projects that I'm working on. I tend to get in a rut and I do the same things over and over and over again and it's probably why I ended up getting tendonitis um, a couple of years ago and unfortunately that actually has developed into something a little more severe called tenosynovitis and I have it in my arm, in my wrist, in my hand. It's probably because of overuse and I've just continued to use those muscles over and over and over again which is never a good thing. So I'm trying to diversify and do new things and not just do the same things over and over again. And I picked up this book, Watercolor With Me in the Forest, and it is amazing. Now, I am not an artist at all. I don't know how to do this very well, but that's what's so glorious about this book. It's so wonderful. And each project has the finished project here and obviously all the colors that you're going to need to do. And she gives you the directions for how to paint this. But on the other side of the page is the sketch. So it's almost like a watercolor coloring book. And all you have to do is fill in with your watercolors. And she explains how to do it all right here. And I am so excited about this. I love watercolor. It's actually something that I would love to learn more about because I don't really know how to do it. But there are some great tutorials on YouTube. But I think this one is such a beautiful book. And she has other books in the series. Series. There's an under the sea version of this book and also a jungle version of this book. So I'm really enjoying this and just having so much fun just doing something different, but it's also creative and it just feeds my soul and just makes me so very happy. I need to name this little bunny. So if you can, leave me some name suggestions in the comment section below because I'm having a hard time coming up with a good name for this little girl. I hope that you're enjoying whatever season you're in while you're watching this video, whether it's spring or summer or fall or winter, and that you've got some really fun creative projects that help you to embrace everything about that season. And I hope that you are staying safe out there wherever you live around the world and happy stitching. <laughs>